Hi! A couple of weeks ago I had the chance to interview one of my very favourite authors, but before I launch into that clip I figured I'd give you a little bit of context. The author is called Garth Nix and he is the writer of this series called The Old Kingdom and the latest books in the series have been published by Hotkey Books, which as you might know I used to work at. As I worked on these books I read them all and absolutely fell in love with them and even had the chance to go on tour with Garth Nix for a little bit. I do miss working on these books and just sort of talking to everyone about them. And so I was really happy I had the chance to chat with Garth as he was on his UK tour. He's actually from Australia. The book we're talking about is Golden Hand. It is a fantasy novel and of course you will hear more about it in the actual interview. I hope you guys enjoy it. It's quite rare when you actually have the chance to like ask one of your favourite authors lots of questions about the books and ask him about his writing. I'd love to hear in the comments how many of you have read the Old Kingdom books just because I'm quite curious. I've talked about them in the past. I'll put links in the description. I'll definitely talk about them more in the future. But for now, here's the interview. Enjoy! Hi! Oi. Today I'm here with author Garth Nix and we're here to chat a little bit about Golden Hand which is here behind me and I've got a really fancy uh, snazzy special, fan copy as well. A special gold proof. <laughs> exactly. It's a very desirable item. And would you mind introducing yourself? Sure, I'm Garth Nix, author of many many books because I'm old and I've been doing this for a long time. Uh, but most recently, Golden Hand, the fifth book in the Old Kingdom series, which began with Sabriel all the way back in 1995. So for those of you who don't know anything about the Old Kingdom series, we're going to try and do a brief introduction to all of the books. <laughs> <laughs> this is where it gets tricky. The Old Kingdom series are high fantasy books. They're set in a kind of divided world. Uh, part of it is called the Old Kingdom, where magic works, two different types of magic work, but the 1918-ish technology of the other part, which is called Anselstier, doesn't work. And in Anselstier, which has this sort of World War One technology, the magic from the north doesn't work. And the two are divided by a wall. And uh, I always like to point out that the, I, I wrote Sabriel, or well, Sabriel came out uh, shortly before uh, George R. R. Martin's Game of Thrones with its wall and also Neil Gaiman's Stardust with its wall. Um, so we're, we're all writing them at this, around at the same time. And most of the stories are about uh, members of a family called the Abhorsons who his job it is to make the dead stay dead. The dead come back in the Old Kingdom and death is an actual place that you can go into if you're either an abhorsen or an evil necromancer. Great, I think that is, that is there's a lot of other tricky stuff. to summarize, but that's <laughs> there's, good. There's a lot of other stuff going on as well, but uh, that's, one of, that's one of the sort of primary things, yeah. I guess. Yeah. Now, one question that a lot of people usually have when they want to start reading the series and when they haven't read any of the books before is where can you start? Yeah, it's slightly complicated because Sabriel is the first book published. Uh, so Sabriel, Lyrael, Abhorsen are the original trilogy, but as it's expanded to a series I have also written Clariel, which is a prequel, and then Golden Ham, which continues from Abhorsen, which is quite confusing. Um, I actually think you can start anywhere, but I would probably start with Sabriel. Mm -hmm. uh, I would read Sabriel, Lyrael, Abhorsen, Clariel, the prequel, and then Golden Hand, even though Golden Hand continues pretty much straight on from, from Ab Horson. But that said, I think you could read them in, in any order. Yeah. And, and personally, I actually often read series out of order. I did as a child too. Mm -hmm. One of the things that I always wonder is when you start writing, you continued writing in the series, obviously with Golden Hand, do you ever have to go back and reread any of the books just to make sure you're on the same page oh, with yourself? Oh yes, yeah. oh yes. Um, I've had to reread my own books multiple times mm -hmm. when when returning to to you know to write new editions simply because I can't remember all the details um, and there's many many details to remember. Mm -hmm. uh, I also have to go back and look at my notes as well sometimes. So uh, and I'm I'm not fond of rereading my own work. I actually like to move ahead. I always want to <laughs> write the next book and not have to worry about the previous ones. Yeah. But, but writing in, in, in an exist, my existing world, um, I have needed to check things and, and go back and, and reread them. And, but one of the nice things is I'm often surprised. I think, oh, I, want, I need to set this up and so I can make this happen. And then I go back and check and I, oh, I have set it up. Some <laughs> tiny little it's detail. There. Yeah. yeah, some tiny little detail in one of the past books has already laid the groundwork for something that I want to do in a later book. So I'm also curious, how much do you know about the world outside of what you've written about in the books? I tend to not know that much. Mm -hmm. um, it's a good question because fantasy writers, some fantasy writers know everything about Yeah, and they world. have it all written down. Oh yeah, down they, they work and, yeah. it all out. I mean, Tolkien famously is 
this is probably the best example yeah. where no everything the languages the history um, the works now I'm much more I work out what I need for the story um, and I discover the world as I'm going along with the story and, and the characters uh, and I typically only work out what I need and a little bit more. One of the questions that I got on Twitter when I put out a call, people were very curious to hear about if there's any plans for TV shows or films or if you've ever had any offers for that. There's been a long and involved film history mm -hmm. with, with Sabre. Sabre has almost been made twice. Oh wow. Um, and it's fallen over for various reasons basically to do with, with budgets and money mm -hmm. um, as is often the case I mean that that's the nature of the film world uh, we almost had it set up again last year oh, okay. uh, that that fell over for other reasons um, and I'm talking at the moment about a possible television series Very and exciting. I was kind of I wasn't pro television for mm -hmm. a long time I was like let's focus on the film side uh, but as as the tele television has got so much better and more uh -huh. interesting yeah, definitely. and particularly for fantasy because you know for a long time there was no good fantasy mm -hmm. television, high fantasy television um, and, and of course Game of Thrones yeah, no, Game of Thrones is. has yeah. changed all that so um, we'll see it's, yeah. it, you just never know with these things negotiations are long I wouldn't hold my breath but there's always been talk there's, there's been very close to films being made fingers crossed fingers crossed fingers yeah, crossed. absolutely yeah, fingers crossed for something good yeah, definitely. Because uh, I guess that's more important than just getting it made. In, yeah. the, in the end, it's more important. Very often, a lot of books and series have journeys in them. Chases and journeys, etc. Golden Hand is definitely one of those as well. Is that something that you really sort of work towards, or is it inevitable, or is it just, you know, sort of a favourite thing of yours to write? It's a good question. I don't think it's inevitable, but um, journeys... You have several different kinds of journey, I mm -hmm. suppose. I mean, you have, you have an actual physical journey, you know, crossing lands and so on. I, I think that's interesting. I think they provide so much opportunity for adventure and story and so on. So that they're always fun to, to both write and I, and I hope read. Um, and then, of course, you also have internal journeys of, of uh, you know, growing up often or, or maturing or coming to terms with things mm. uh, or, or of personal discovery and so on. So I guess all of having the sort of geographical journey um, works of, with it often yeah, works with yeah. a with a personal journey as well and yeah I guess I just like the I like that kind of story yeah. and so I like I like telling them as well so I always tell people about the series that it has some of my favorite female characters you write female characters so well and I was wondering if you feel like the discussion has changed at all or has become more prominent from when the first books came out, which was about, was it 20 years ago? Certainly when Sabriel came out, and it is 20, 21 years ago from its first publication in Australia, 20 years from America, first American publication, um, it, it was noticed at the time, and it was, you know, the book was complimented for having a, uh, a strong female protagonist um, in Sabriel, um, which, was, which was good. I was pleased that uh, people responded to that. I think there's more talk about it in the genre now but of course mm. there's actually also many many more examples um, but I've been happy to be complimented on the fact that Sabre was an early an early fantasy an early young adult fantasy with uh, a female protagonist but but of course there there were others and I was very much influenced by uh, Robin McKinley's The Blue Sword and The Hero and the Crown uh, by Tamara Pierce mm -hmm. um, her uh, Alana books uh, by Ursula Le Guin and uh, Tenar and um, the tombs of Atuan. I mean, so they, they were around. They just were not as as prevalent. And I deliberately set out with Sabriel. I wanted to reverse a whole bunch of stereotypes. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, good necromancers. And writing about her was part of it. But but also she was just more interesting to me. I'd like to take all the credit for <laughs> deliberately. Uh, trying to, to do something interesting uh, with, with gender. That was part of it, but also a big part was that as I started writing the story and thinking about the story and working out how I was going to tell it, I just found her more interesting. Right. So she just, she, she was there. Yeah. She... Another one of my favorite things about the books is that the dead creatures, they are some of the most like terrifying descriptions. Usually it's quite difficult if there's like a monster that looks so different from anything you've seen, like how can you make sure that you describe that well? Do you have any inspirations that you go to, like any specific images, or do you try and just draw up the darkest thing you can <laughs> think of? Uh, it's an interesting question because I do like monsters mm. and creatures. Yeah. And I typically, I go for things that frighten me. So I start writing them and if they frighten me, I think they'll, they'll work. Then the job is done. But, yeah. but I guess I treat them the same way I treat characters in that I try and make them real. I try and make them feel real. And I, I really invest a lot of 
energy and, and thought and you know emotion into trying to make all my characters feel real and that it, that includes the monsters and the creatures and, and including the dead you know, what do the what do they want you know mm. why are they doing what they do and so I'm trying to invest them with with more than just the classical image of the shambling zombie type thing. Yeah. And I never use that word. I don't call them undead. They are the dead. Yeah. Um, and they come in many many different varieties because death transforms spirits and flesh. Can I just confirm pronunciation of the new character's name? Is it is it Ferrin? Well, I would say Ferrin, but I would also say you can pronounce the names however you like. Okay. Yeah, uh, that's that the thing obviously with Sabriel and Lyrion. Yes. Yeah. Across the board, I'm not one of those authors who says this is the way you pronounce it and there is no other way. Mm -hmm. I think if you hear it in a certain way in, in your head when you're reading, that that's absolutely fine. That works. Fine. Yeah. yeah. So Ferrin is a new character who comes from sort of nomad tribes. That's the best way to describe it. Was that based on anything specifically. The tribes who live in, in the north uh, beyond the Old Kingdom uh, are based on a, a whole bunch of different uh, nomadic tribes people of different times. So I'm always doing passive research where I, I read about things and I store them up for, for later use. I read lots of history and I've read a lot about various nomadic peoples uh, including the sort of classic ones like the Huns and the Goths and so on mm -hmm. but going right up through to the the Mongol Empire and, and so on. They're not based on any one particular kind of nomad but I take many different pieces from different cultures and different parts of history. My final question is one that I feel like I always wonder when I'm reading the books. Basically, the characters sometimes go into death. Sometimes go a little bit into death, sometimes go a little bit further. I'm always waiting for them to go into death and I know it's sort of used quite sparingly. And so I wonder if you very often are more tempted to have them go into death more often but you sort of want to keep it a bit more sparing. Is that something that you think about? I think that I use it sparingly because it is even though the abhorsons able to go into death and they have their seven bells they use to, to command and control the dead and to also ease their passage through the, the gates and so on it's still actually incredibly dangerous yeah. and difficult so I can't have them going there all the time because they would they wouldn't go there all the time they'd do it as required mm. I guess so I think that reflects my desire to reinforce the reality of the world whereas if if it's like going to the shopping mall right to pick up <laughs> the groceries that then it would it would lose so much of its impact so i hadn't actually thought about it till you asked me that question <laughs> but i think that 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 is why and there is much more to explore of course in in the old kingdom and in and in death and uh and in ancestia and in the nomadic parts beyond uh, the old kingdom i will explore more in death i'm sure at some point um, but that in the books, I hasten to add, in, in perhaps in some short stories which mm. I've got underway, and and I hope there will there will be more novels too. I do have ideas for them. It's not what's next, but I still hope to, to come back to the Old Kingdom again. That's good to hear. Obviously, I urge you guys to go check out Golden Hand. I'll leave links to all the books in the description, and you you're on social media as well, right? So Absolutely. I'll leave some links in the At description. At Garfnix on Twitter, Facebook. Garfnix. Lovely. Um, you always post find. really nice fan art that people have made as well people and shared give, with you. People give me fantastic fan art. I'm particularly when I'm on, when I'm on tour, hmm. people you know, they give me photos of their cosplay, they give me paintings and drawings and things they've made. It's really brilliant. I love having written books that inspire other people to, to make art. Thank you everyone who's done that. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and that you've gotten to know a little bit more about the Old Kingdom and Golden Hand and I will talk to you guys later. Doei! Doei.